Hey everybody, today's video is going to be on gram-positive cocci, and this one's going to be focusing on streptococcus. So the two types of gram-positive cocci that we've looked at in this video series are staphylococcus and streptococcus. And a big distinguisher between these two, a big way to characterize and distinguish them is whether or not they produce the enzyme catalase. So staphylococcus produces catalase and streptococcus does not. And the way we're going to remember this is we're going to think that staph has enough staph to make catalase. So staph has a bunch of staph that are cooking up catalase. So they are catalase positive. Okay, we're going to just go through some general qualities of strep. So it's catalase negative. It's a facultative anaerobic gram positive cocci. It is the most numerous group in the oral cavity, and it's the most predominant bug in dental plaque. And so here I, I listed something called GTF. So this is uh, also known as glucosal transferase. It's an enzyme that makes this uh, polysaccharide, which is a big fancy word for a bunch of sugars put together. So uh, strep, specifically strep mutans, has this enzyme called GTF and it makes this big sugar molecule and the sugar molecule is made of dextrans and the enzyme takes sucrose and makes dextrans polysaccharide from it and this is what makes plaque sticky now if that was a lot to take in on my next slide I kind of break it down in a little bit more organized way and then a uh, strep will ferment glucose to lactic acid and cause cavities. Specifically, strep mutans will do that. So as an example question, you might see something that asks, which bug will cause the pH to drop when growing on glucose agar? And so you have to make the connection that, you know, the pH is dropping, so this bug is producing lactic acid. So that's the connection they want you to make there. Okay, so it's catalase negative, and again, the way we're remembering this is that staph has enough staph to make catalase, so it's catalase positive. So strep doesn't, so it's uh, catalase negative. So here's a question for you. Um, which bug is sensitive to H2O2, and which one is resistant to H2O2? So if you want to think about that for a minute, you can pause it, but I'm going to go to the next slide, and we'll go through it. Okay, so if there's a couple things you have to know to answer this question. The first is that H2O2 is peroxide. The next is that catalase is an enzyme that breaks down peroxide. And then also peroxide hurts bacteria. Bacteria don't like peroxide. So a bacteria that is catalase positive is going to resist H2O2 and any bacteria that has catalase negative is sensitive. So the answer is strep is sensitive to H2O2 and staph is resistant to H2O2. Okay, big thing we got to know about this is a uh, hemolytic classification. So when blood when uh, grown on blood agar, some strep will lyse blood cells or break blood cells. And so this is how strep is classified. So if it's alpha hemolytic, then that means there's incomplete hemolysis of the blood. So the way we're remembering this is we're thinking A for alpha, A for almost. So they almost break all the blood cells, but not quite. So A for almost, incomplete hemolysis. And then the next group is beta hemolytic, and this is complete hemolysis. So we're going to think B for best. It's the best one at breaking down the blood cells, complete hemolysis. And then the next is gamma, non-hemolytic, and we're thinking G for garbage, because it doesn't break anything down. So G for garbage. Okay, this is a little flow chart I, I made up. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this. This is just a way that I'm uh, organizing kind of what we're going to talk about next. So we have streptococcus up here, and then we have arrows going to alpha, beta, and gamma. And then over the arrow, we have a reminder of the hemolytic classification. And so I put a, a, just a box around this one, which tells us we're going to be talking about alpha 
strep in uh, the next couple slides. So there's two main types that we'll go through and that you'll see tested on most frequently, S. pneumoniae and viridan streptococci. So notice here strep mutans is in this category. And really any time that strep mutans is mentioned, you got to really zone in on this because, of course, you know, it's the cavity bug. And so this is something you really got to know well. So strep mutans is part of viridans streptococci, and it's alpha hemolytic. So incomplete hemolysis, A for almost. A big one here is endocarditis. Um, that's pretty frequently tested on. You got to know that alpha hemolytic strep cause endocarditis. So we've got a strep pneumoniae, which does have a capsule and it is optochin sensitive. And then we have viridan streptococci, which includes strep mutans. And this has no capsule and optochin resistant. And then uh, I wrote down here again, causes endocarditis, carries, and it also causes brain abscess. Okay, we're going to focus on a strep pneumoniae. So optochin sensitive. So the idea here behind this memory aid focusing on chin is the bug is either afraid of the chin or it loves the chin. So in this case with S pneumoniae, we're going to think of a runny sniffly nose. When you have pneumonia, you know, your nose is running. So we're thinking that it lives in the nose because they're afraid of the chin. And so that's how we're remembering that it's opto chin sensitive. It's very sensitive to the chin. It doesn't like the chin. And so it goes and lives in the nose. It's the most common cause of uh, community acquired bacterial pneumonia in the US. And then we mentioned this earlier, but strains of pneumonia are distinguished by their polysaccharide capsules. And they're very well known for their large polysaccharide capsules, as are uh, Cryptococcus neoformans. So those two you got are frequently tested on as far as knowing that they have a capsule. Cryptococcus neoformans and strep pneumoniae. Okay, we're going to look at viridan streptococci. So this one is optochin resistant. It loves the chin. And if you think of strep mutans, it lives in the mouth. So it pretty much lives right there by the chin. So viridan streptococci lives in the mouth because they're not afraid of the chin. And then the strep pneumonia 